Hey guys, thanks for watching again. Um, in this video we're going to turn my header tank into reality and install this. So enjoy this one. Right, you might remember my header tank uh, mock-up. So I've been down and picked up the real one. Nice job, all welded up. Now yeah, we'll get some fittings and get this installed. One header tank. So I've got that in there. Fits in really nice. I um, so I put uh, four mil bolts, three of them, elongated. I made those holes bigger so the rivets on the outside. I showed the outside, but the rivets don't grab them. And obviously a bit of um, sort of drill some holes for fuel lines. And I've got a water drain that runs vertically down here. I'll show you on the other side. So I finished up the rivets on the longeron. I went with four mil bolts. I've got some mushroom head or button head bolts coming. These are just hex head bolts. Um, and they'll just look like a rivet, so that'll be fine. So three of those. The reason I went with four mil bolts is because the A5 rivets are already a four mil hole. So there's no issues. I don't have to get any engineering approval to drill extra holes in the um, the sloping longeron. So, yeah, four, three four mil bolts. Um, and I need to drill, so my drain, my water drain will come out underneath here somewhere, so I'll just find where that wants to come out. And so here we go. I do have an extension, obviously from the bottom of the, the tank, uh, this height here down about, I think it's about 100 mil to the bottom skin but I'll put some sort of an extension on that vent line I'll just run up the back here go into the top and main feed line drops in there and run up run up the back here looking good lick of paint should be great alright so I'm just working out how I'm going to it's secured along the top um, I put some foam rubber on the between that and the fuselage side, and probably put some foam rubber around the edges. But I'm just thinking I need to build that. Worst case scenario, I hit a tree or something. Well, let's get serious here. Um, if I was to damage the aeroplane, last thing I want is the header tank to rip out and have 60 gallons. Uh, what's it hold? 30, 30 gallons of fuel. Um, yeah, running into the cockpit. So, just got to keep that in mind, I guess. Um, I'll secure it. Where do you stop? You're not building a battleship here. It's got to be light, but also I want it to stay where it stay in place. Um, if I do have an accident, you know, the wings rip off anyway and tear the fuel line out, probably. But the fuel's in the wings, so that'll disappear. So... Just a consideration. Okay, so just to secure the tank, I think I'm gonna. I've got a decent bit of L angle here, just from the hardware store. There's a one and a half mil angle, um, or 30 by 30, one and a half thick. So I've cut that out. Now, because it sits off the floor about 10 mil, a normal L angle doesn't quite give me enough uh, lip, if you like. I'm gonna to stop the um, to stop the movement there. I'm going to line the other side with foam, foam, some sort of foam rubber, and a bit along the bottom and up the back there, and then I'll fit this L angle in there. Um, you soon learn there's no such thing as scrap aluminium, but I've got this out of my box. Um, it's got a couple of holes in it, so just from a previous practice or something. So I'll show you what I'm going to do to recover that. So I drilled some lining holes in it. Um, I was going to put that in there, but to be honest, the lightning holes look like crap, so scrap that idea. So still on the header tank, I'm just um, just making up my own grommets, if you like. They go in here. So the header tank, so I've got a sort of abnormal size hole, the size of the hole that I want, just with the Tygon tubing. I've just slit that and whacked it in there and 
makes a really nice um, nice grommet I guess rather than going and buying grommets all the time got plenty of the other rubber grommets um, but they're a particular size this is for the fuel hose which is oversized so I sort of can't miss the fuel hose will go in there alright so I've got the header tank here um, I could paint it grey and try and make it look like it's sort of camouflaged and trying to hide it but uh, let's have some fun with it Alright, we've cut some stickers for our header tank. Here's some I prepared earlier. Stars and bars. Print. Cut. Alright. Then the, um, the clear, clear pull-off sheet goes on top, nice and flat, just like that. It's obviously a bit hard to see, but I've got the um, stars with the circles transferred to stickers. So uh, stickers are cut, this is off my um, eBay machine, just got that off eBay or Kogan or one of those, so relatively cheap, I'm um, used to use it for my model aircraft, so hopefully one day I'll do my aircraft registration. And also making a start on my wiring diagram, this is the Zenith one for the Continental O200, the Jabber is going to be fairly similar, so we'll make a start on that. So I got my stars made up, made two sizes just because I can. Then I got my paint, painted the um, painted the header tank. I've also put mastered up at the moment some high density foam um, on the uh, uh, fuselage skin side and along the bottom. And that's just drying. So getting a good whiff of that. I call that uh, that is khaki green, just a khaki colour, not khaki but deluxe khaki and it's actually called gloss deep wilderness for my header tank so i'm just rigging up um, my elevator trim so i went and got the right colored wires for obvious reasons now i've just decided to sit here and um, plait it all i'm not sure if that's the done thing but I end up with a nice, nice loom. Um, yeah, it's only low voltage, 22, 22 gauge wire, um, but it ends up looking nice and in one piece. So working along nicely, and I got, uh, I got the hail, <laughs> hail's coming in under the door, so I block that off. A bit of a storm in Zenithland. All right, so I've uh, wired in my my plaited line, and the reason I've done this, I've got the right colours to match the Ray Allen uh, indicator at the front, which is over here. So the Ray Allen, good old Ray Allen company, with my LED indicator, the switch, and the flap motor. Sorry, the trim elevator trim motor. So green, orange, blue grey and white. Um, couldn't get grey but I've got brown. So I've wired up the front. Because I've done that I dragged out the, um, the extra piece of five core wire that Zenith supply. This is going to go in the elevator with the trim motor. So yeah I'm sort of taking rough notes but it's easier just to wire this up now. For argument's sake I've got red to orange, green to green, white to white grey goes to brown and blue goes to black so instead of trying to remember that although I will document this now because at the back I've got this this wire supplied by Zenith hanging out the back of the aircraft so the colours will just line up so if I do this now save me time in the future
get out all the air bubbles using a bit of foam. And then hopefully we don't take the paint off. One tank. All right, so one uh, one completed header tank. Pretty happy with that. Get my fittings in. Uh, rubber on the back, just to uh, help with shock absorption. And I'm just waiting on. A, um, I've got one eight MPT blank in there at the moment, just while I painted it. Um, I need a standoff about a hundred mil, and that's going to be my. Um, uh, my daily daily water drain if you like that'll poke out the bottom of the aircraft so I've just got a, um, a normal push to test or uh, we'll push to sample valve with a um, with an extension which I may even I plan to put a bit I haven't received it yet but I plan to put a bit of um, a hose on that um, just so it pokes out through the aircraft skin we'll see how that works but uh, going well so just with the um, with the header tank as well, I just noticed I got my bandana on, so in Victoria, in Victoria we're doing the mask thing, so uh, I've been out, been out uh, scavenging, looking for parts for the aircraft. Um, might be a bit of an insight into my colour scheme, but uh, a bit of a military theme to my colour scheme. Originally I was going to call the aircraft, um, was it going to be Freedom, Freedom Fighter, but I think I'll go with Freedom Flyer bit more passive not as passive aggressive um, I'm a lover not a fighter so might be some insight into my color scheme that I'm going to go with however the aircraft's not going to be this color all right guys uh, it's mail time got some mail here good old uh, aircraft spruce package so I'll have a look inside here now the reason I just opened up the top got the invoice there um, I don't want to come across like I'm showing off at all, but I guess I'm at that stage now where we're just continually ordering parts in. Um, you do a, do a little job, oh I need that, uh, need some, some of this, need some wire, need some crimps, you know, bus bar. Uh, it's very easy to get, um, feel a bit overwhelmed at times I guess, with the amount of gear that you actually have to order. Ideally you want to sit down and try and order it all, but it's not practical. Um, and also some advice I guess would be to I've ordered quite a bit of gear just in dribs and drabs and you sort of forget what, what you have ordered and haven't ordered um, the latest thing is wire you know 22 gauge wire I mean I've got 18 gauge wire uh, 16 and I know I need some thicker stuff 4 gauge and 10 gauge something like that um, and I might go shopping and find something at the auto parts shop or down at uh, the hardware store but yeah I sort of I'd recommend that you um, just write down what you've ordered from who and when it, when is it expected um, just to keep track of what's coming in otherwise you end up with three or four of everything. I'm also going through the process of um, so as I, as I order stuff I'm not just ordering one or two I'm starting up quite a, that's, that's like my wait, when it stops making noise that's like my AN bolt box um, so I would sort of 50 or 100 of each bolt um, just for later on down the track. Um, just started a collection of split pins and I think I showed everyone on the heat shrink last time. So just when I order stuff, um, do it in, I'm doing it in bulk. So anyway, I got the box open from Aircraft Spruce. Um, Alright, what have I got? Oh, got a facet, my facet fuel pump. Cool. It's ready to go in. Now I've got some, oh they're smaller than I thought. So I've got two um, 
solenoids, relays, start contactors, master contactors. So these ones, um, so I've ordered two, and got two, thank you very much. Um, I've made a bit of a, a blue there since I've researched it. Um, these are continuous, um, continuous cycle if you like, so you switch them on you can leave them on. So good for the master circuit. Um, I ordered two thinking that, trying to be smart, um, I could just use one for the start solenoid, um, which is momentarily. So I've since learned from then that obviously you need a momentary one, momentary one for the start circuit um, and a continuous one, so it's continually on, for the master circuit. So you could, you could use this intermittently, um, but you can't do it the other way around. So guess what? Guess who's got a spare? Um, and I'll get a start solenoid somewhere down the track. Um, oh, I got a uh, little press button switch. Just a switch there, push the, push the start, so I'll check that out. Now I was really hoping, hmm. and that's all. So let's have a look here. I was hoping my circuit breakers um, and a lot of other stuff were in there. So push button switch, uh, two solenoids, facet fuel pump. No, that's it. See, this is what I'm saying. So um, maybe I've got another box coming with some other stuff in there with all the circuit breakers, etc. So I have to check up on that, follow it up on my emails. But that's what's arrived tonight, so get stuck into that. All right guys, bit of huffing and puffing, but I uh, got it in eventually, um, nice and tight. So I got the header tank installed. Um, it's all mounted in there, fairly rigid, so I can't move around, can't slide around. And I just have to come back out again. I have to put the standpipe on the bottom for my daily water drain checks. But have a look at this, header tank installed so I'll have the main main feed line from both tanks will be T to the top feed line come down drop into there tank will fill up um, feed line to the engine come out through the elbow I've got a water drain down the bottom straight through the floor this is about 100 mil 150 mil off the outside skin of the aircraft so it has to go through that cavity and the vent line I could have shunted it back a bit further um, but for various reasons, I'm happy where it is at the moment. So just have a slight ollie off of the fuel tube just to come back and pick up the, um, it'll be a Dell clamped to the uh, vertical member there. So pretty stoked with that. Time for some carpet and one header tank almost installed. So I'm picking up the um, sloping longer on runs it through here and then on the inside so that I can remove the um, header tank if I can get in here I've um, so I uh, enlarged these holes like there to go over the rivets um, and just the bolts AN3 bolts with nuts will secure that to the top and the bottoms in rock solid can't move, can't go anywhere. So now the job almost done. A um, little bit at a time. We're getting there slowly. What else have I got going on? I got some buzz bars. My bus bars arrived the other day. Fairly substantial, 150 amps or something. Um, so I got three of those. Obviously positive, negative, maybe an avionics bus or an extra earth bus um, onto my shelf. On the other side, I can also just playing around until I get my EFIS. Um, not sure how wide, how close, how far the EFIS pokes out because of the angle there. Um, I may leave the shelf short to, for access or just fill it all in and put holes with grommets. But um, there's my two shelves. I started running the wires through the center console. Um, fuel sender, I've got a flat motor. Uh, the other side fuel sender. I did have, I think earlier on in the video I showed you the braided braided line idea that I did. Well, I've scrapped that. 
I come out here, had a look at it, talked to a few mates, cut the wire, start again on that one. Um, I've just got my notes up here. So we're through the tunnel, I call it, through the center console. I need the flap motor, headset jacks, elevator trim, an antenna, fuel senders, and two pedo tubes. So I'm just trying to bundle that up so that um, I can basically, this will be a main junction here. Um, I'm thinking about a, I'm considering just mounting an aluminium tube in there as a conduit. Um, this is a thin walled aluminium tube. Um, already got my fuel line in there nicely. Um, but I'm thinking about, yeah, just secure that with some Adele clamps and run my looms and everything up through that. Time will tell. I'll probably change my mind. Um, but that's where that's at at the moment. So once I get everything run through here, then I'll start and then I can tidy it up and bundle. And then my plan is to get it all to basically where your ankles would be. Um, and then obviously it runs vertically up. And once I do the uh, do the dashboard, so a little bit often, and we're getting there. Also, just played with my toggle switches, got them labelled up nicely, looking good. Center console. All right, guys, that's a wrap on that one. Um, Next video, hopefully I'll start some wiring and we'll see how we go on that for an amateur builder like myself.